Hello YouTube reseller mom here. Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about finding wholesale items to sell on Amazon FBA. Today is currently Thursday, September 5th, 2019, and I personally have been working on the wholesale side of my business for well over a year. I do not claim to be an expert at all by any means, but it is something that as you get into Amazon, you know, I always suggest people starting off with used books because that's a great way to find inventory that's very low risk, low uh, capital, and then gradually working up your way to retail arbitrage type of items, online arbitrage, and replenishables, and then bundles, and then gravitating towards wholesale and private label. Now there are differences between all of that today. I want to talk to you guys about finding wholesale items because somebody had requested that I touch on that. This last summer I was able to go to ASD, which is a huge convention geared towards wholesalers for any type of um, selling, both for brick and mortar and for online e-commerce. And I was able to get a lot of contacts there. So I've been, you know, definitely ramping up that side of my business the last few weeks and I thought I'd do a little video on kind of like the beginning, the basics, the very basics on what to do. Uh, I'm by no means going to be telling you all my trade secrets and you know all the work that I've been putting in, but it is work. So uh, you know if you follow some of these directions and do your own work and besides you don't want to copy other people, you want to find your own good products to sell without all the competition. A lot of times you know if you see something out there that somebody is posting on Instagram or Facebook or whatever promising you to make a million dollars in three seconds without any work, one it's too good to be true and two, everybody's going to be at least testing that out and uh, they will tank the price in a heartbeat. Okay, so let's get started and dive right in. The first thing I wanna to talk to you all about is kind of the two main methods on finding products to sell on Amazon. And it's kind of the chicken or the egg here. Uh, you can either find a vendor first and then find products from that vendor to list, or you can find products and then go try to find the vendors. And each of these ways, there's pros and cons to both. You can find a vendor and that's great. You find out that you can make an account with them and you can sell their stuff, but then maybe they don't have anything worth selling or their margins aren't that great. The other way is to find products, which is great, but then you might find the vendors and then they might not want to sell to your company or e-commerce or they're already... Um, have enough Amazon sellers on them. So there's there's pros and cons to both ways. I think you should scope out both and then keep in mind with both of these ways that you can find products and vendors and then create bundles. So that's kind of really a good, a good way to, oh, keep people off your listing and get a product out there that is going to make you quite a bit of money and not as much competition. The best way would be to have two different items from two different vendors um, get a bundle and advertise it and get it going. But we're not going to talk about that. I'm just saying keep all the possibilities open. And, you know, a lot of people swear by one way or the other. They swear you got to find the best selling products on Amazon, then go find the vendors and jump on those listings. And some are saying, you know, find your local vendors, find what you have access to locally. Uh, that's not going to have a whole lot of competition that has good products that you can sell as well. So each way is right. You know, find, find what's going to work for you. Okay, so some different ways to find products. You can look at products that are already found, that you've already found doing retail arbitrage or online arbitrage. I do that a lot. I'll find something that, uh, you know, I found a really great deal and, and they are a great coupon deal or a clearance deal. And, you know, go ahead and look on the back of that package and see where that, that product's from and try to find a wholesaler for that product. Um, products that you like or that you currently use. I find that all the time. Uh, I'll find a particular maybe beauty product or hair product or kitchen product that I really like and then all of a sudden I can't get it at Safeway anymore and now I'm looking online and uh, you know maybe I should look at the wholesale availability as well. Uh, you could just search the internet. That's, that's easy. Um, and there's a lot of things that you can search. Some of my searches currently are like the best selling toys for this Q4 coming up. That's something that I wanna know. And then once I know what the best selling toys are going to be, that's kind of where I wanna search my wholesale opportunities too. Conventions, look around for your conventions, both local and you know maybe close to you. 
Uh, ASD is held in Las Vegas. That's what I went to this last summer, and it was amazing. I got so many contacts. It was unbelievable. The other show that I've been to and particularly liked was the Seattle Gift Show because it was just a one, two, well, maybe two or three day event close to me in my area. But don't be afraid to you know, maybe drive a little bit or do a road trip, et cetera, to go to one of these conventions. Not only are you going to make connections and relationships, but you may be able to make connections with other resellers as well um, to get some friendships and, and relationships there. Okay, so we've already talked about this. You can look at Amazon's top selling products, buying ideas and lists from others. So there is a website called Worldwide Brands that will give you um, lists of what's selling. I see a lot of other people out there that will sell you a list or for a small fee get on their monthly list of ideas or OARA uh, opportunities, wholesale opportunities. Uh, they will pull data. There's tactical arbitrage out there that you can do all sorts of searches. Uh, you can have a VA scouring the internet as well. I mean, really the possibilities are endless in that route. Search your local area. Uh, all the videos that I've watched on finding wholesale products, that's kind of the top pick is they say open up your phone book, open up your local search or, uh, or Yelp, whatever you use in your local area, and see if you can get some local opportunities. Um, and I have done that as well. I haven't been very successful, but they do say that the success rate for just cold calling wholesale places is, you know, if you make a hundred phone calls and you get one or two connections, you're doing pretty good there. Okay, so calling in person tends to get better results than emailing. And this is just a tip that I've received and do stand by um, both on Facebook. This has been mentioned several times that if you are just blanket emailing out several companies, your chances of getting a good result from that is less than if you called the company and said, hey, hey you know, I am looking for whoever's in charge of your wholesale department and how to set up an account with you, etc." Okay, next slide. I wanted to briefly touch on things that you are probably going to need to have ready for a wholesale opportunity. So if you are just starting out with Amazon, you may not have these things lined up and it may take you a little while. I don't think I got an EIN number or a reseller permit until I was about nine months. It was, um, I started in April and I think I got my reseller permit the February the next year. So it was a good, 10 months until I had my reseller permit. But if you are going to start looking at wholesale opportunities, I am often, almost always asked for an EIN number and sometimes my LLC paperwork. I'm set up under an LLC. You can set up as whatever you want, but sometimes they ask for the company setup um, paperwork. The reseller permit, uh, having a business bank account is also very helpful. Just, uh, uh, boy. In general, having a business bank account outside of your personal bank account is something that I would strongly suggest um, setting up as soon as possible. And then other things that might help you out is to have a store website. Some of the application processes have asked for a store website. Uh, you can use your Amazon seller website, that is okay, but if you have another store website to use, that might help you out as well. Uh, one suggestion that I pulled while putting this, I've been putting these slides together for the last week, and one of the suggestions that I came across, I don't remember where, but they rented a booth at an antique mall to have a business address to ship to. Some places only want to sell to a brick and mortar type of location, and as an e-commerce seller, you may not have that. So uh, their workaround was to get a an antique mall. Now, with that being said, yes, that is you know, something that you can do. However, I would not suggest by any means mm, misinforming or misleading the company you're going to be working with. I like to have very open, honest relationships with any wholesaler I'm working with and they know I'm selling on Amazon and there's no, you know, there's no smoke screen going on there. So, you know, if you are contemplating that, I do suggest that you actually have an antique booth and maybe be selling the items there. But that was that was something that I came across as a suggestion, and you can take it take it with a grain of salt. There, uh, somebody else suggested that you list a business phone number in the phone book. Uh, that is also something that's pretty easy to do. You can list your phone number 
on Yelp or whatnot. Uh, I don't list my, I don't have a business line um, and I don't do this one, but that is something that may help you out if, if that's a roadblock for you. All right, so you are ready to start off. You have found somebody that has a product that's willing to work with you, um, but you need to maybe start the application process and, and you found good things about it. So what, what do you do? Oh my gosh. It is, it is a little overwhelming the first, first time, and I learned by experience for sure. Last year, I was part of an online group that had a VA that scoured for products, and a lot of times they were scouring websites that they didn't really check out, and I wound up getting my um, credit card information compromised. Now, it all ended okay, but they weren't really verifying that the company was legit. So that's the first thing you need to start off and do is, is the company legit? So my favorites are just to Google the company name and then add scam or add reviews to see what other people are saying. And if the reviews look terrible or it says, hey, beware, this is a scam place or whatnot, then I stay uh, away from it. And what I'm looking for in the reviews is, you know, was the order complete? Did they ship the right product? you know, was the whole logistics from start to finish good or bad? Uh, you can check the Better Business Bureau. You can check who is .net to check domain names, um, but definitely make sure that whatever you are working, whoever you are working with is legit. Uh, start small with, with small orders and ask for samples. If it's someplace that has some crazy minimum, like 500 or a thousand minimum, then you may want to ask for samples to actually see the product and make sure things are good there. Most of the companies I'm working with are fine to order small small um, quantities and small for me is anywhere from like five to maybe a case of 36. And then I'm watching. I am watching from start to finish how it is working with that company. I watch for the communication. Did it ship out in time? Was there a long lag time? Did it show up on time? Was the box damaged? Did it get packaged well? Um, was it exactly what I asked for? Was there any additional packing or label that's going to be involved that I wasn't prepared for? Things like that. Then uh, I always like to have at least two ways that I can sell a product should it go south. Um, and I, I don't like really saying bad purchases, but you're gonna have bad purchases. And they're not necessarily you did something bad or wrong or anything. I remember one time somebody um, bought a whole bunch of Justin Bieber dolls, and then Justin Bieber kind of had a had a uh, meltdown there, and his dolls, the desire for them tanked. So now he's got, you know, 300 Justin Bieber dolls. What do you do? Uh, so always have a couple ways that you can sell. I do eBay. That's my go-to. Facebook Marketplace would be the next. Craigslist. You can do Bonanza, Macari. Um, plan on having a garage sale twice a year. Some people do a warehouse sale that I... Uh, I see that they have a warehouse and a couple times they do a big warehouse sale to move stuff that they, you know, can't get rid of on Amazon. So always, you know, just have that in the back of your mind. Not everything that you scope out is going to be a winner and you'll need to get back, get rid of it and get your capital back. Okay. Keep track of who you've talked to and what you've done. I do this through Excel and I'm going to share with you how I label that and everything. But, uh, you know, Google Sheets works just as well as Excel, but keep track of it some way. All right, next, uh, you wanna make sure you're dealing with actual wholesalers, not middlemen. Um, wholesalers are gonna buy directly from the manufacturers, and we're gonna talk about that, I think, in the next slide, what you're looking for in terms of invoices and stuff to make sure that you're not gonna get any IP claims. But there are a lot of middlemen out there. You don't really wanna deal with the middlemen, you wanna deal with actual wholesalers. And yeah, we're gonna talk about that more here. My next slide is just ask, ask, ask. Different things to ask. And this comes, you know, I started off not knowing and I went to YouTube and I watched a ton of videos and then I've been to several conferences um, making those connections and some of the things that I learned to ask. So the first one is, what's the MOQ? Minimum order quantity. This phrase was thrown around a lot and it's something that any vendor you're working with should know. Uh, ask if there's map pricing, minimum advertised pricing. So if you're going to work with a wholesaler, a lot of times their contracts say that you need to follow map pricing. And what that means is, um, I'll just use a game, say 
you know, you're working with somebody that does Hasbro and they're selling you Monopoly games and Monopoly's map price is $19.99. And I'm making this totally up, so don't, don't quote me there. But that means that as a reseller, you need to abide by the map pricing. They will have a list of the games. They will say that Monopoly can't be listed below $19.99. When you are setting up your repricer or your prices in Amazon, you need to not go below $19.99. And if you do, they will send you a nasty gram saying, hey, you're not following map pricing. Um, you need to or you're going to be kicked off the, the listing or we will file complaints or whatever their, their letter says and your wholesaler might kick you off if you don't follow that. That's a deal breaker. Okay, ask what the turnaround time is. Some places are getting their stuff from out of the country or from a manufacturer and uh, you may be ordering it thinking it's gonna show up next week and really it's gonna be three, four weeks and if you're getting it from overseas, it could be three or four months. Ask if you can return damaged merchandise or how they handle that. Do you get a refund? Do you get credit? Uh, how does that how does that work? A lot of times they'll want to have pictures and they want you to um, have have it looked at within a certain amount of time. So if your order arrives on Monday and it sits in your warehouse for a week and then you go and you find out it's damaged, you may miss miss your window uh, window frame window frame time frame time frame of credit availability. Okay. Ask how much the freight is. A lot of times I'll find great selling things. I'm like, oh, I can make so much money off of this, but then the freight is going to kill me. Unless if I order a certain amount to get free shipping or there's some other opportunities there. Some stores will allow you to go pick up. So if it's close enough, you could go do that. Um, yeah, you just want, you want to know what freight is because that definitely uh, goes into your pricing. Do they ship to brick and mortar, residential pallets, or directly to Amazon? So directly to Amazon is kind of where I'm going with a lot of my business, which is great. Some places don't ship directly to Amazon, but they'll sh ship to residential. Some places will only ship to brick and mortar. Some places will only ship on pallets. One of the perfume places that I found at ASD said it's a two pallet minimum, and I'm not set up to take pallets right now. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then one little expert excerpt that I found was, uh, was great, so I put it here, and it says, hello, I'm launching a small insert the product type store here. I was wondering if you could give me some information on your minimum order requirements and wholesale prices, thanks. And so that's just a general, like if you were gonna email somebody a quick little template there. So now you've found a item and you want to start crunching some numbers here, uh, just some things to keep in mind. When you're looking at gross profit, gross profit is generally uh, just revenue minus cost of goods. When you're doing Amazon FBA though, you do want to factor in Amazon fees as well. And then you also want to factor in the shipping to yourself, the shipping to Amazon. If you're shipping directly from them to Amazon, then that one. Um, packaging, you know, does your items require boxing, bagging, bubble wrapping, uh, any sort of excess packaging. Returns, is it a high return type of item? I know when I do clothes, I get a lot more returns on clothes than I do for other things. I also get a lot more returns on electronics than other categories. Advertising, uh, is it a product that doesn't have a whole lot of velocity? You may want to factor in advertising costs. Damages during shipping, you know, uh, if you start, you just want to factor that in. <laughs> There are some items that just get more damage during shipping than others, and it is what it is. And then labor. That's why it's good to do a test run and see how the product's coming, because you may have to do some extra labor going on that you weren't initially factoring in. All right, now we're going to talk about some things to avoid and the reason for avoiding them, and it mainly has to do with you will not have the proper invoice to give Amazon if you have an IP claim. So things to avoid. If you're just starting off, I would avoid drop shipping altogether. Um, drop shipping is not for a new person and it is not something to get into lightly and depending on how you do drop shipping, there's like right ways to do it and wrong ways to do it. So for right now, if you are just starting to look for wholesale type of, type of opportunities, do not look at the drop shipping quite yet. Get some other things mastered before you move on with that. Or 
sign up for some sort of course with somebody that knows what they're talking about to, to do drop shipping properly. Next up, liquidation. Liquidation centers are awesome for certain things. For anything that you are selling new, you are not going to get an itemized invoice with a liquidation center. They're going to say, here's a box of stuff for X dollars, you get what you get, and it's your job to piece through it and make whatever money you can. So liquidation is great for people who need a bunch of stuff to sell on like eBay because then they can have their staff go through and sort things out and then post it on, on eBay and whatnot. But for Amazon, I would stay away from liquidation. The other things that they are sometimes called are buybacks, returns, uh, anything without an itemized invoice. So sometimes what happens is Target or Walmart will say, I have a truckload of back to school stuff and I'm selling the entire truckload for X price and a liquidation type company will come in there and they will buy them or they will buy the returns. So maybe it's all the returns Target has had that month and they will buy all of that. But you're not going to get an itemized invoice with that. So it could be brand new stuff. It might be great stuff to sell, but you're not going to get that itemized invoice. So if you have any sort of problems with the item and they ask for invoices, you're not going to have that. And here's here's the problem, you know, Target might sell, we'll just say toaster ovens. They're gonna sell you a truckload of toaster ovens for an amazing price, you can't go wrong. And what's happened is one of those was sold to a customer and the customer came out and they switched it with their old toaster and then did a return, you know, because they're a terrible customer and they've done a return to Target and Target's just looped all that in there. And then you quickly flipped all that over to Amazon and you didn't check each box you thought they were all brand new, they all looked brand new, and now a customer of yours has received a used toaster, it's not what they want, and they do a claim on Amazon saying that they bought something as new, it was not new, it was used, and Amazon's going to say, we wanna see the invoice of where you got that product from, and you're not gonna have it. And best case scenario is you are not going to be allowed to sell that product anymore. Worst case is they are going to shut your account down. So just stay away from that. Out of country suppliers until, again, you are very familiar with it and have done a lot of research. So this video is not set up for any sort of talking about drop shipping or out of country suppliers. And I'm not saying they're bad, there's just a whole lot more to go through with that because getting things in and out of the country just has more regulations to it. So we're not talking about that today. <laughs> so until you've mastered some of the other things going on, I would stick to in country, whatever country you're in, stick to the in ones where everybody's familiar with all those rules. And it's not just you, some of the other out of country suppliers don't understand American rules. Oh, I'm in America, so I'm just gonna speak like that. American rules, and then they don't understand Amazon American rules. And Amazon has come up with several rules in the last, um, I'll say year, one is back to school supplies and back to school backpacks and stuff need additional paperwork and testing. They have cracked down on pesticide type of items. And pesticide items can include like odor controlling socks or um, fungus controlling socks where they're gonna kill the fungus on your feet is now under a pesticide type of rating. So anyhow, there's a lot of rules going on there and we're just gonna stick away from them because we're new here and that is definitely advanced. Okay, let's talk about supplier invoices for a second here. I wanted to bring this up because I found this on a website and I thought it was very good. I also highly recommend the book Suspension Prevention and then there was one that I got at the last, hold on, I can look at the book title here, at the last conven convention by a great lawyer called C.J. Rosenbaum called Your Guide to Amazon Suspensions for last year. Both of those books are on Amazon and I suggest them. But in general, what does Amazon, or when does Amazon ask for supplier invoices? They will ask for an invoice if they get complaints about the quality, if they get complaints about the authenticity. If there's product condi condition problems such as used, sold as new, and items that are not as described, and if there's any concern about safety. Now, some of these you may think, oh, you know, I'm that's not gonna fall under that, but really, you know, complaints about authenticity, 
they could just leave a general feedback that says, hey, I had one like this that said, these sweatpants don't really feel like the quality is up to par from, I don't remember the company names, uh, standard. And those words got flagged and I got asked to supl supply invoices. So, you know, you may get a feedback that's hinting around that and they will go ahead and jump on that. They have all sorts of algorithms that run to search for keywords that you know may not think you may not think that it's going to get flagged and it winds up getting flagged. So, just uh bringing that up here while we were talking about it. Okay, so how can you tell if Amazon will accept your invoices? And I pulled this from uh webretailer.com, lean commerce, Amazon invoice verification. So how will you know if they will accept your invoices? This is just kind of the standard general what your invoices need to have. They need to be dated within the last 365 days. They need to be legible and high quality, never hand rented, linked to their website. All addresses must match exi exactly a professional website and quantities match your sales. Now I did read over this and then I went and read the comments and that was really great and eye-opening. One I had not thought of the handwritten ones because when I was at ASD I did get a handwritten invoice. Now it was followed uh, with my packaging with a, a printed one but I didn't even think about the handwriting one. The other thing that I learned was linked to a website and the website cannot be under construction. If you're submitting an invoice and it says, you know, the website is under construction. When they go to check that, you will get denied as well. So that was interesting too that I found. Then the last interesting thing that I, I found was a lot of people said that, uh, and I don't know how much truth there is to this, but a lot of people were commenting that sometimes Amazon will see that something is selling wonderful and they want to get on it so they will ask you for the invoice and the next thing you know you're not allowed to sell it and Amazon has taken over that listing contacted your wholesaler it set up an account and now they are the main person selling on that now I don't I don't know if that's true or not I'm sure there's some truth to that it was a uh, it was interesting to read how many people were commenting that they were asked for invoices and next thing you know Amazon is kicked them off of the ASIN and they are now selling it. I do know that they are watching things that sell though. If something is going to be really good seller and make lots of money Amazon will will do that. I mean that's they're out there for for themselves as well. Okay the last little thing is I pulled this from uh, Facebook. I think it was from Facebook. Yes and they just added a thought when on a subject here that if you're going to start doing wholesale you may want to get authorization letters for Amazon from the vendors and it should indicate that you're authorized to sell and have approval from the brand and then you want to if possible include the ace and exemption information on the letter so that you can process that through a case if you ever want to do bundles for the products so I thought that was a great little tip thought I'd throw that in there for you with all the IP noise, they said that they've started doing this process. So I think I might start that as well. I just found this one out, I think yesterday morning and I flagged and I said, oh, that'd be a great little tidbit to add to this topic of discussion to go ahead and start getting the authorization letters as you're, as you're building up those wholesale accounts and everything to go ahead and, and get those authorization letters on file. Let's talk organization for a minute. You are going to quickly get buried in all of the information out there. There are so many rabbit holes to go down, so many companies to contact, and it may take a while for them to get back to you, and you need to keep track of which ones you've talked to, uh, what stage are you at, did you submit an application, are you waiting for, you know, maybe I'll submit an application and then they want my reseller permit on file, so I need to follow up with them. So you got to keep track of what stage you are with all of those companies and what items you have found as well. So this is how I do it. You can copy me. You can find your own way. However you keep organized, it's just important to stay organized. I have a desk drawer here that's just for wholesale catalogs. 
and I started this when I got back from ASD because I had a little I had a little nook up on the shelf and it started to get overflowing with catalogs and so I switched to this system. So I've got my applications in the front here. I've got my business insurance just to file right there. And then each of these tabs is a wholesale company and when invoices come in, I just pop them into you know their file there. In the middle here, I have catalogs that I have not gone through and followed up with yet. And in the very back, in the dark corners of the dungeon here, I have catalogs that I have discarded for some reason or another. And on those catalogs, I have put what the reason is. So I have one that will not sell to me because they are not open to Amazon currently, and that's the one we're gonna we're gonna flip through. I'm gonna share you share some insight too. And then I had one that like I didn't find any products that were good, so I just put on the you know make yourself a little note on why you're discarding that company at the time. Because the one that I didn't find anything with, maybe I wanna revisit that in six months, or maybe I changed my mind, or you know, something might change. I don't know, you can throw them out too, I guess. Okay, on my Excel sheets, I've got three different types of tabs. My first one is a company tab, which has all my companies on them that I'm dealing with. Then I have a master item list, all the items that I'm currently listing and selling. And then each company has their own breakout tab that I am working with. And then I have a failed tab. That's just where I put things that I tried out and they didn't work. I put them in the failed tab and maybe make a little note like, hey, the price tanked or Amazon was, you know, jumped on this listing or it just didn't sell enough units, etc. Okay, so on the company's one, I do a general, you know, the name, the location, phone, product type, and then kind of just where I am in the application process and such. For the items, I wanna keep track of the ASIN. That's important because a lot of my items are two packs or bundles or whatnot, so I, I don't wanna keep looking up, up that information. I like just to be able to copy that when I'm replenishing. And uh, yeah, the, the company, and then I put in the cost of goods and the price and stuff. And I like recording this when I do send it in because then, you know, maybe 30 days after it's hit the warehouse, I wanna see how that price is doing. And I also keep track of it in, I have Channel Max as my repricer right now. I'm not advocating for Channel Max, I'm not dissing Channel Max, they are what they are. The other go-to repricer that a lot of people tend to use is Aurora. I just suggest using one. And uh, yeah, I got a little note section, and then for each company, I have pretty much the same thing laid out right here. So that way I know which company I'm getting what product from and kind of keep track of those companies. In Inventory Lab, I do like that you can pull company profitability. So I will look at that company after a while, especially after just starting a wholesale account with them and say, you know, was this company worth working with? Am I making enough money off of them? And uh, usually if you buy more, you will get better deals. Uh, both in shipping and for the items. So just keeping track of that. This is the last slide I have for you. And then the second part of this video is going to be live, not live, but <laughs> uh, scanning through the Amazon Seller Central app at, on this actual catalog. But I can't do any more recording today because I am running out of time and I've got other things I gotta do. And I've got a whole bunch of inventory in my office that I gotta get shipped out. So next week I will pick up on finishing out filming, but we're going to be going through this magazine here, and I believe the company is US Toy, but uh, we'll find out when I get, pull it out and start doing this for you guys. And this is just one item that I found. Now I take these catalogs and I always try to have one in the car that I'm looking at and up when I'm watching TV or just kind of, um, you know, doing anything where you have some downtime. You go into the doctor's office and you know you're gonna wait 20 minutes, take a catalog with you. So I'm opening up the Amazon seller app. I'm going to the little camera that's up in the corner and I'm just hovering over the picture and seeing if I can get an image match on Amazon. That's how I do a lot of my searches. Now you can do keyword searches. This one probably would have come up, superhero bopper inflate. And it's right here, superhero bopper inflate and you can verify that it is with US Toy, and I believe this is with US Toy. The other thing that you wanna do is match the picture up exactly. There are some that are really close, and maybe you'll get a, an image search, but it's um, instead of purple on the ends, it would, you know, pink or yellow or whatever. So you wanna make sure you get the exact image. Now this one did come up and it is rotated, so maybe they have taken their own picture for the ASIN, or they got a different company picture. You can contact the company and say, hey, I need 
need images and a lot of times they will uh, provide you with product images. Okay, so I have hovered over, I've scanned this item, it pops up, other things I'm looking for. I'm going to make sure that it's a match, first of all. Sometimes that's hard with my eyes and the tiny little phone screen, but uh, make sure it matches. And then I want to look at the rank, and I'm looking, you know, 117,000 in toys is not bad. That's okay, I want to definitely look at that. Uh, the reviews right here, you want to take a look at that. If everybody's giving it a zero or a one star and it's got a bunch of reviews, maybe stay away from that. You get a lot of returns, get a lot of brokens, or it's not working or whatnot. This is okay, three and a half stars out of five for a blow up hammer, sounds good to me. Price, price is very important. We've got a dollar seventy here. I'm gonna to have to buy 72 pay pieces per case. So I'm gonna have to buy a case of them. And uh, that means roughly, what is this order gonna be? About a hundred and, we'll just say it's gonna be about 140 bucks with shipping and everything. So not too bad, 140 bucks is not, not bad uh, for a first time type of wholesale item to invest into. The low price is a 1090. Fees are gonna be almost $5. You're gonna have gross proceeds as 607. If you minus your two buck cost, you're gonna make about four bucks on each one of these. That's not bad, that's a 200% return. Definitely something that I wanna look at. Next up, uh, having Amazon on it or other FBA sellers, those are things to factor in too. If Amazon is all over this and there's 12 FBA you know, people on there, then you're gonna have some price wars going on. So you wanna make sure the velocity of the product is enough to compete with those and the price range is as well. Okay, so now that I've said, oh yeah, this is something that I wanna look into further, then you still need to do more research, unfortunately, and before you make a purchase. What I would go do next, if I'm sitting on the couch, is I'd hit this list button and I'd get the um, ASIN number. So if you go to list, there's like a little drop down menu. And again, we'll go, we'll do this when we do it live too. And I'll grab that ASIN number and then I pop it into Scoutify, which then can link it straight to the Keepa graphs. And then I'm looking at the Keepa graphs. Has this been on the market for a long time? Is Amazon normally on it? Are they just off for this weekend that I'm looking at it? Is there usually a lot of other FBA sellers? Did this listing just get created? Um, is it seasonal? You know, there's just all sorts of things that you wanna look at. And there's other tools out there that you can look at as well to see if it's going to be a good thing to, to purchase or not. Now, sometimes the fees won't show up there because the item has only been merchant fulfilled and it hasn't been shipped into the warehouse. So the, you know, if you see this fees as question mark or zero or whatnot, then you know you may need to do some more investigation to kind of see what the fees are gonna be for that size, shape, etc. It looks like this folds down to pretty flat, so the fees are not gonna be super bad, but if this was um, you know, really heavy, that would affect the fees. Anyhow, I like to look for things that I know exactly what's going on and it has a history of selling, etc. If you want to get on this and make a listing, that's a different video and that's a little bit more advanced, and not impossible, you could make a listing for this guy and then do advertising, etc. But we're not gonna talk about that today. For right now, I'm just kind of showing you the basics. I pick up these catalogs, I open up my camera, I start image searching, I find products that are good to sell, I look at the rank, I look at the reviews, I look at the price, I look at if Amazon's on it, I look at the gross proceeds, I look at the shipping cost, I look at the minimum, um, let's see here. Yeah, then I factor all that in and see if it's a good purchase or not for my business model. All right, next week I will do all of the other filming and searching with you guys to do a bunch more and we're gonna look We're gonna look at a lot. I'm, I'm not gonna hold out on you. We're gonna look at some bundle things, we're gonna look at some no-goes, we're gonna look at some good, some bad, some ugly, etc. But for right now, I've gotta get off and then I will film the rest of this next week. It is now Wednesday of the following week and I have a chunk of time to go ahead and do this video and finish it up and show you catalog scanning so I can hopefully get this video published by the end of the week. Anyhow, a couple of things to preface this scanning with. One, uh, this is not the only way to find things. This is one of many ways to find products to sell on Amazon. Two, this, to this company, US Toy, is not open to Amazon sellers they are not accepting any more Amazon sellers. So, you know, don't take this lead as, hey, you should go contact these people. I'm trying to show you how 
I go about finding things. I'm showing you the research part. And I think it's very important to learn how to do the research because whatever you see out there, if somebody gives you a hot lead, you don't want to just take their word for it. And you certainly don't want to compete with that information going out to many, many other people. And information gets old. So you may see this video in three months time, six months time, uh, or, you know, even your own products in six months time may change. I certainly have seen that with my stuff. I have scanned things that have been an awesome buy one day and then six months later, nope, it's not, not really uh, performing well. So we're going to stay away from that for now. Okay. Um, then I just also wanted to say that even though I go through and I scan these guys and I mark them, that doesn't mean that, that they're done and good to go. That just means I've flagged them for further research. And then I will go sit down with each of these listings and look at certain things such as their rank uh, competition, and if there's any other ASINs that are very similar. A lot of times you'll see a single pack that you're like, oh, that's pretty good. But then somebody comes out with a two pack and that's going to have way more velocity than the single pack based on pricing and demand, etc. So you want to go and, you know, see what other customers are buying. Uh, just see if there's anything else that's really similar that other people are liking. Um, things like that. So you don't want to, you want to go do research in every nook and cranny before you put down a lot of money on any sort of product. Um, all right, so let's, let's dive right in. Let me just show you my markings really quick. So this catalog, I put not selling to Amazon peeps on the front so that I kind of have a little note to myself and file this in the back of my cabinet. So on the magazine covers, if I need to make a note or whatnot, I just go ahead and write on the top of it. Um, nobody really cares. They're, they're yours to mark up as you see fit. And then I got these little taggy tags at, I found them on clearance at Bartels, I think for 75 cents a pack and I got a bunch of them. So I like to tag the tops because when I put it in my filing cabinet, I put it down like so. And so that's, that's just what I do. Now these guys, I can throw in um, a pack of this and several catalogs into the car and take them with me. And then that way I am not ever going to be without something to do for work. And that's kind of important to me. That's just kind of a personal note there because we started online school here at the house and our schedule is changing in time stuff. Okay, so um, next thing, you know, you could go to the company website and find out if you can sell first or you can find some products to see if it's worth going down that road. We've already talked about that. All right, I'm going to switch over to the Amazon seller app and we're going to start scanning here. I went ahead and scoped out a good example and I want to show you several things going on with it. So this is a pirate page and I found similar examples like this in many categories. This is something I come across a lot for, especially for parties. Um, yeah, just in the parties and toys a lot. You will see it in other categories, but boy, with Q4 coming up, toys is kind of, I don't know, I see it the most in toys. I scanned this little group of toys and it is pirate toy set seven piece set so what these people have done is taken the toy set and then also grouped other things together with it this first one up in the top has grouped a hat and a vest and then you have just the toy set itself and then you have the toy set with a hat and let's see here we'll go down just the toy set a pack of 27 here so this one item people have made a few different listings combining things out. So this would be great for Halloween, be great for summer parties. It's a pretty good all in all item to get listing wise. It's got a lot of things going for it. So um, the one that I like the most is the eight piece set because both of those items are in the catalog. If we, I'm trying to do this, that's the hat, that's the seven piece sword set. So I've got both items on the catalog. They're in the same page. Now I looked around for the vest. I've got princesses this way and I don't have any vests. Oops, hold on. I don't want to do that. I want to cancel. There we go. I don't have any vests in this catalog. So what the Nikki, Nikki's knickknacks has done is they've taken the seven piece set plus the black pirate cap. Let's see here. It's 99 cents per pack on the little sword kit and then $1.50 on the little hat and then she found a vest 
from probably somebody else. Now it could be in this magazine. I'm just not seeing it. But if I were Nikki, what I'd do is I'd find that vest in a different wholesaler and then group it up together. And now I've got, geez, a 10 piece set going for $15. And I know she's only in for a buck 55 and 99 cents. So she's two fifty five in for the hat and the sword. I don't know how much the vest cost, but let's see here. What is her? She's got $9.46 to work with. Okay, so you take out the $2.50 and let's see here. She's got almost $7 to play with. How much that vest do you think cost her? Probably like two bucks. She's got a pretty good margins going. Now the rank isn't very good, but this is one of those things that if you did some advertising to, etc., you could uh, help get that. She does have seven positive reviews, so not entirely terrible. And um, yeah, you could definitely beef that up with some advertising. And, you know, those types of things, if you have a web, web page of your own store, you could cross post over to eBay or other type of platforms. Anyhow, so the one that, that I would like, though, is the 90,000 rank by JJ's Toyscape here. And let's take a look at that one. So that particular hat in the magazine or catalog, I keep calling it magazines, but you know what I mean. Two bucks plus the 99 cent pack, so $2.99. She, they have $8.36 to work with, so like a $5 profit on each one of these kits, and 90000 in toys with an item that goes pretty year-round. I mean, summer parties, followed by Halloween, followed by Q4. This is a really good, good one in terms of seasonality. Um, yeah, this is another one that I was going to totally jump all over. Now, you will need a poly bag or something. I don't know how big those kits were going to be. Things with hats. Hats, depending on how it came, sometimes they're packed and they're packed flat, which would be great. I would definitely want to do a test order and then see how I'm going to package it up. If it came flat, great. Slide all that stuff into the best possible poly bag, call it a day. If the hat is something that's going to be crushed, uh, that's when I would go, okay, what do you think the customer returns are going to be for crushed hats? Is it going to be a lot or a little? And then that would be determining if I put it into a box or not. I've got enough margin to play with to definitely box something up here if I wanted to present that in a better, better, um, you know, just so that the customer is happy and cut down on complaints and such. The other thing I could do is I could go read why it's only getting three and a half stars. If I read all those reviews and every customer saying came crushed, crushed hat, hat was destroyed, then that would make a determination on if I would put the extra labor and cost into a more sturdy packaging. So you definitely want to look at that. I'm doing some plastic wear right now that does have a tendency to, to break. And so I have bought some boxes for it, etc. And the margins are worth the effort to not have the customer returns and and whatnot. I want the listing to do well. So anyhow, those are all things going into my mind when I am looking at that. The other thing that you could do is create this exact same thing and add something extra into it to make your own listing. So totally copy this um, in terms of the items. So you'd have the seven piece set, the hat, and then like the other person adding a vest, uh, you can add a whole bunch of different things. And that's one of the topics that the lawyer talked about when I went to ASD and he was talking about IP claims and things like that. So if you create your bundle and you create something that's unique to the bundle that somebody else can't copy and the go-to would be the go-to that I see and he recommended, et cetera, is some sort of printout that you can do at home. So guide to perfect pirate party. You know, how hard would that be to make? You open up your Word document or your Google Word and create a step-by-step step for the perfect par party, pirate party, um, and spruce it up a little bit, maybe get some images on there, some artwork or whatnot, and you can pay for artwork or fanciness through Fiverr. That's pretty cheap too. And then just print those out, and then all of a sudden you've got that. I mean, Vistaprint is really cheap. You could take a postcard type of thing, type out something about parties, a treasure hunt, treasure hunt for your kid's party, and boom, you've added something to the listing that is 
probably going to cost you less than 50 cents. You've differentiated. Now nobody can jump on that listing with you unless, I mean, it'd be very difficult to jump on the listing with you. Not impossible, not impossible, because they could order your thing and then, you know, go to Vistaprint and basically copy your images. But if they did that, you're getting into the legality of stuff. Anyhow, I'm just shooting out ideas there for you on what people are doing, etc. Now, I, I wouldn't, the legality is not, not something that I would ever want to go and do. If I see somebody that's gone through the hassle to make a, uh, one of those added sheets for things, that's their listing. That's my opinion on it. Whether it's legal or not legal or in the gray area of legally, I'm, I've got enough ideas of my own that I do not need to jump on there. And I, I would hope you do too. So anyhow, um, Let's keep looking on here. We've got crazy eyeball patches. We'll do a couple more searches and then, uh, yeah, that's it. We'll just do a couple more searches here. All right, trying to get things to work here. On this page, I've got a little note to myself up here. I have flagged the eyeballs. The hat guy, all I did was I took my flag and I put it over my little guy. I mean, these things are cheap. So let's look at eye... Oh, goodness. What did you just... Oh, a little costume came up. Let's see. Let's look at that, and then we'll look at eyeballs. So $9.13 for the buy box. It's $274. It's a Pirate Boys shirt, and they want cost of unit $5.10. So I can tell you right now, that's not going to be... not going to work for me. The other thing you can do, now that I, I see it and it's come to my mind, is see how that... the up in the ASIN name, it says Gift Express. I bet you if we looked up Gift Express, we would find all sorts of goodies. So let's do that. Gift Express. Not always the case, but yeah, look at that. I bet you all these items are in here. So you could do that. That's another good way to look at things. Gift Express, Bright, um, bright Easter Eggs. Uh, I don't think I really want to do this on camera because it just would be time consuming. I don't think I can find it, but, uh, yeah, I can't find the Easter section off the top of my head here. Oh, maybe, it, oh, there's an index. Let's just look under E really quick. Easter, no, we've got Earth Day. Let's try eggs. Nope, neither Easter or eggs is in there, but they do have seasonal catalogs, too. So I didn't bring over their seasonal catalog, but I did get their regular toy catalog and then their seasonal catalog. And I betcha it's in the other room under seasonal. So you could look up, you know, if you find a name and this is U.S. Toy, so you could look up U.S. Toy, you could look up Gift Express. You could then see, geez, that's 9,000 in rank. I really would like to jump on that. That's 15,000 in rank. Um, this Black Cauldron is only, you know, less than 5,000. We've got some lanyards. Boy, we got all sorts of good things to go in. Look at those flamingos for your yard. Ah, yeah, good stuff here. We got trophies. I know the trophies were in here. I saw those. I know the grass skirt table thingies were in here, etc. So that is just another way to look for things. Now let's look at eyeballs. What were the eyeballs? We've got two listings here, U.S. Toy, and we've got Dollar Item Direct. Now, I've noticed Dollar Item Direct on a lot of listings, too. And I wonder if they're open to resellers. And that is something I will look into, because if Dollar Item Direct has the same stuff that, that U.S. Toy does, and U.S. Toy won't sell to me, maybe Dollar Direct will. The other thing I just did was I went and did the math. If you bought 13, 31 dozen for $64 a piece, it works out to about 17 cents a piece. Now, let's see here. 17 cents a piece. Oh, I clicked on the wrong one. And the gross proceeds are 317 or 315. So you're making pretty good um, return on, on very little pennies investment. Now, this is not one that I would like to jump on because it's only got three stars. It's th over 300 rank, and it's kind of in not a category I think it should be in. If this was in toys and the rank was 50,000, 
you know, that'd be a completely different story. So you've got to take a, take a look at the whole, whole thing, but you can go and source things, even though it didn't come out, you know, we're not going to source it from us toy. We've got dollar item direct. So you could look them up. You could find their website. You could, um, you know, buy it on your non Amazon prime. You cannot buy on your prime account and sell on your prime account. The same items. Amazon gets really really that's a good way to get banned right there you don't want to do that so look up look up those rules before you do anything for sure um and then i just have one other item that i want to show you and we're gonna then be done with this because i've got to get back to work okay so on the baseball baseball section now i've got let's see if we can get things to scan all right, no, I don't want ban racing bandanas. So I'm gonna have to cover that up and see if we can get that. Now, what's weird is there was two listings. Oh. It is easier to not move the magazine. We'll just go like that, my goodness. No, 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 I do. I do. I just did this a second ago off the camera to line up the next thing I was going to show you. And I swear. Okay. Taking the phone out of the freaking thing because it's driving me insane. Much easier to do it with the phone. And you still want, to, you just really want to scan that. This is the frustration part. I don't want the pencils. I don't want the thing. I want that little guy. There we go. My goodness. But I could cut out all that frustration part, but I think it's important to know that happens. It can be frustrating. I can sit there and be grumbly with my catalog by drinking my water and watching my daughter ice skate. And that's just part of the frustration of doing it this way. Okay, so we've got two listings here, one for 355 in rank, uh, 355, and one for 111. 111 is the one that I'd be after. Uh, let's see here, we've got margins of 785. The items cost 67 cents and 49 cents. Uh, so, what is that, like a buck 20? We'll just say a dollar 20. Add in a poly bag, a dollar 30. We're still making like $5 profit on this item. There's only one FBA person. This would be another really, really good item. So now here, here's how I would go with this. I would take all the items that were maybe my top three, top five items from this company. I'd see what their minimum orders are, how many I'm going to be getting. Um, and then, you know, is there any limits that I need to do to hit free shipping or any other sort of discount? Sometimes the more you order, you're going to get discounted more, um, or they'll group in and they'll give you free shipping if you buy $500 worth of stuff. So I would then see how to optimize my order and I'd make a test run of several different products. And I would put all that information into my wholesale spreadsheet and wait for my products to show up. Okay, great. So products have shown up. With this one in particular, it's probably going to be two flat type of items. I would then go and figure out how I'm going to pack it up, including the size of poly bag. Uh, do I need to cover up any UPCs? Do I need a do not separate sticker on the outside? And while I'm doing that, I take pictures of what I'm doing. So step one might be to black out the UPC codes. Step two would be put two in an eight by 10 poly bag. Step three would be uh, put FBA sticker on there and a do not separate sticker on there. And in my little SOP that I'm making up and I put them all on the Google Sheets, uh, you know, I would have all the materials you're going to need, what it should look like before, what it should look like after, any other nuances. Uh, sometimes I want the presentation to the customer to be the front of something. So take a pack of paper plates you would want the front of the paper plate facing the customer or the clear part of the poly bag. If you have any nuances like that. Um, and then I would adjust my spreadsheets. If there's any sort of packaging or labor thing going on into, into your numbers. Uh, so if I needed extra bubble wrap or this item does need a box, you may want to go in there and calculate, you know, add that in so that you are looking at the correct margins of profitability. 
Okay, so then now I've got my SOP written. I've got my stuff updated. Um, now I can give it to my, my son's currently doing packaging for me. So I could give it to my son and he knows, okay, when I package up this item, I'm going to need this size bag and I'm going to need do not separate stickers. And this is how it should look at the beginning. And this is how it should look at the end. And I can hand him boxes of stuff and he can go out and just go ahead and start packaging those types of things up. And that's to prepare myself to get a warehouse and get employees. And so now he's packaged everything up. I send it off. I will then follow up with that and see how many I sell in a month. You know, buying a case of a hundred and we'll just say buying a case of 150. Was that overzealous? Was that not enough? Did I sell out in two weeks? Uh, did I wind up sitting on inventory for six months and it not really selling? And I'll go back and I'll make decisions to uh, adjust those types of items. And now I've got a, a pretty good list I'm running and managing that list is my next 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 thing. I'm going to be scoping out maybe software to keep track of inventory velocity and maybe seeing if I have any software that would help me do that a little bit better as well. The other thing I can do is maybe hire a VA to do product research or do those types of things, tasks for me. So that's kind of where I'm at in my business. Um, I wanted to just kind of walk through how I physically look at the magazines and what I do. Um, you know, you saw there's a ton of flag flags in here. We'll just go like that really quick. Uh, you know, you saw that there's tons of things that I flagged for further research here. And just because you do the research doesn't mean you're actually going to get an account with that company. I got denied. I went through the application process and then they said, nope, sorry, we're not open to Amazon people right now. Would you like to be on the list? Yes, I would like to be on the list. Sure. Um, and I don't have any problem sharing this type of information with you because if I got approved, we'll say in six months time, I would pretty much just need a new catalog and to start from square one because you never know what's happened in that six months time. Yes, I could go back and see the ones that I flagged, see if they're still good or not. But these types of products are always changing because there's always somebody out there with a course going, you know, how to do these types of bundles and there's new bundles coming out and then people run out of stock or they'll delete the listing once you know, they're done selling that product and now you, you know, have trouble getting on it because it's gone. So, you know, things are always changing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a pleasure to make it for you. If you like these types of things, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day out there. I'm getting ready to package up and ship out, um, bunch of stuff that I bought over the weekend and I did all my wholesale stuff yesterday. So doing good here, having a great day. All right. Take care guys. Have a wonderful day.